The British avoided offensive campaigns but kept up continuous action along the front line which divided Palestine at the mountains of Samaria, north of Jerusalem. Australian Air Force reconnaissance flights in 1918 provide us with the first aerial films of Jerusalem. A remarkable event was then taking place in Aqaba, on the shores of the Red Sea. Here was the camp of Emir Faisal, son of the Hashemite Hussein, Sharif of Mecca. From here, the Bedouin fighters raided Turkish positions in Transjordan in a series of operations known in history as the Revolt in the Desert. Every day, uh, Arab from the, bed, from the desert used to come there to to say that we are with you, with with Faisal, with uh, Faisal King to uh, we are ready to fight with you. They used to come every day. The railway, Hezaz railway, very many stations, and the army, in every station there was an army. They used to take the Arabs to fight that army, to break that uh, soldiers, uh, to make war on them, slowly, slowly. The living spirit and virtual commander of these raids was a young British archaeologist, Thomas Edward Lawrence, who would later attain international renown as Lawrence of Arabia. Tales of the revolt in the desert would spread throughout Europe and America like a modern version of the Arabian Nights. The Hashemite family was the only Arab body which cooperated with Britain in the First World War. In return, they sought to re-establish a pan-Arab kingdom throughout the Middle East. Britain dispatched a letter of support, explicitly excluding Christian Lebanon from this kingdom. Reference to Palestine, however, was somewhat ambiguous. The Arabs would claim that it was granted to them, while the British would declare that no such promise was made. This dispute would never have erupted, however, were it not for that other British document, the Balfour Declaration, which promised Palestine to the Jews. June 1918, a British ship carrying supplies of gold and rifles to Emir Faisal also bore a distinguished passenger, Dr. Chaim Weizmann. The Zionist leader sought to reach an understanding with a man who then represented the Arab liberation movement. The desert meeting between the two leaders would subsequently lead to the signing of the weizmann faisal agreement on the Palestine question. Weizmann would never forget the drama of his experience with Faisal. In later years, whenever the relations between Jews and Arabs became tense and violent, he would say, yes, but back in 1918 it was possible for a Zionist leader and the greatest of Arab leaders to meet together and to reach an agreement. Perhaps what happened once could happen again. Another of his impressions was the apathy of Faisal about Palestine. Uh, Faisal was dramatically concerned with Damascus and with uh, Baghdad, the great historic capitals, but this little s squalid corner that he called Palestine, he attached very little importance to it. On September 19, 1918, the war in Palestine flared up. Hundreds of cannons opened a barrage of hellfire on Turkish positions. The main force then broke through the Jezreel Valley at the historic pass of Megiddo, climbing the Nazareth Hills and proceeding through the Golan Heights towards Damascus. At the same time, a task force was sent to occupy Transjordan. It included the Jewish Legion, comprising volunteers from Britain and from the United States who came to fight, as Jews, in the battle for liberation of the promised land. The Jewish Legion was the first to cross the Jordan River, fighting on the same side as the Arabs, but for different political reasons. The immediate Turkish surrender in Transjordan opened the road northward to Syria. This was the finest hour for the Arabs. Faisal and Lawrence rushed to Damascus. 
Allenby ordered the rest of his troops to halt at the outskirts of the city, allowing the Arabs the privilege of entering Damascus first. Damascus, historic capital of Syria and cradle of modern Arab nationalism, welcomed Faisal enthusiastically. Cries of long live Faisal and long live Orange, that is Lawrence, could be heard everywhere. People were happy. Men and women gathered on the rooftops. Faisal passed through the Al Hamadiya marketplace from which the road leads to the Umayyad Mosque. People were pleased, hoping that they would be granted an Arab state, as they were promised before the war broke out. A state to be ruled by Faisal. News of the establishment of military rule in Damascus, headed by Emir Faisal, made a great impression on the Arabs of Palestine. Suddenly realizing that Syria was about to achieve independence while Palestine was promised to the Jews by the Balfour Declaration, the Arabs awakened and began political activity. They declared that Palestine was an inseparable part of Syria. From then on, they referred to the land as southern Syria rather than Palestine. The Arab national feeling in Palestine was part of the Arab national feeling in the rest of the Arab area, the Arab Middle East. Yes, Palestine was uh, part of the Asham, or the Asham meaning, you know, the whole of Syria, uh, northern, southern Syria, and so on. Uh, we, you know, this division between Palestine, Syria, Transjordan, Lebanon, and so on, was, uh, was in, came about because uh, France and Britain and Russia at one time before the Bolshevik re resolution wanted to have spheres of influence. And, but to us, we were, we, we, we at least thought that we were a part of one people and one country, and this is how we wanted it to be. In November 1918, Germany surrendered to the Allies. The First World War came to an end. Millions received the news with outbursts of joy. The scene now shifted to Paris. The French capital was privileged to host the peace conference. The eyes of the entire world were turned towards this city which was celebrating victory. The atmosphere was saturated with great hope. The three most important personalities at the peace conference were the leaders of the free democratic world. The British Prime Minister David Lloyd George, the 80-year-old Prime Minister of France, Georges Clemenceau, and the person who was firmly resolved to ensure the right of self-determination for all nations, the President of the United States, Woodrow Wilson. The news spread rapidly. Delegations came to Paris from all over the world, demanding the right of self-determination for their own nations as well. In January 1919, Paris looked like an international carnival of freedom seekers. Among others, one could meet the main characters of the Palestinian drama. The Jewish Liberation Movement delegation, led by Dr. Chaim Weizmann, and that of the Arab Liberation Movement, headed by Emir Faisal. Faisal's appearance in Paris created a sensation. His regal bearing, the aura of the revolt in the desert, and the participation of the legendary Lawrence himself in his delegation all made a great impression on the media. To improve his political standing, Faisal conferred with Weizmann and signed an agreement of cooperation with him, relinquishing his claim to Palestine and consenting that it be granted to the Jews. Faisal did not sign this document wholeheartedly. At the last minute, he added a certain reservation in his own handwriting, namely, on condition that the Arabs gain their independence, else I will not consider myself bound by a single word of this